13 is Ainsley Pears. 3, Harry Pickering. 5, Dominic Hyam. 6, Tyler Morton. 8, Sammy Swaddix. 10, Tyree Stowen. 11, Joe Rankin Costello. 14, Silver Thomas. 17, Hayden Carter. 27, and Captain is...
Fucking embarrassing. Fighting for this now. Fucking embarrassing. Wow, so my thoughts on uh, yesterday's absolute catastrophe at Dumpdale. Um, the most Rovers thing to happen since the last Rovers thing, the most Rovers thing rather to happen, which was a few days prior. Um, to work so hard in that second half to get that goal. Um you know, the first half was poor from both sides, really. Neither side threatened much. Rovers, as soon as I saw the lineup, I didn't think we had a presence up front, a target, and it proved to be that way. And, um, you know, it was that bad that Jean Dahl actually made two changes at half time, which is very unlike him. He usually waits until at least the 65th. Um, but, yeah, brings Hedges and Diaz on, who completely changed the game in that second half. You know, Dolan and Thomas were frustrated in that first half. Didn't offer enough, either of them, but there was no one there for them to really play off. Uh, Smodic isn't that presence. He's, he's a great finisher. and he'll, he'll work himself into the ground, but he doesn't have that presence about him. And as we've seen early in the season when he was playing at false nine, he's he's not best suited to that position. Um. But yeah, second half, Hedges and Diaz comes on and we fully deserve the win because the first half, it should have it should have ended no nil the first half as it rightfully did. But the second half, we were absolutely robbed and we were robbed by our own doing, if we're honest. Um, and I think most Preston fans have seen their manager come out and say that they fully deserved a point. Even Preston fans in the comments, you know, online saying they must have, you know, he must have been watching something different that manager, because they they just didn't. Um, it's as simple as that. And the goal is an own goal, and it comes from us, from our own doing. It comes from Ryan Hedges, trying to be cute, trying to be clever. In literally the the last kick of the game, um. And it's just so silly. Um, it's it's naive, it's stupid, but for someone of his age who's 26, 27, however old he is, it's not, he's not a teenager. He should know better and he could have quite easily cost us playoffs now, unfortunately, dropping those two points. Um, we needed that win desperately. Um, you know, it's been so long now since we've won in the championship and the games are only getting harder now. You know, we've got Burnley who are looking to come and win the title at Ewood. So we'll very much be up for it just to do that. Um, you know, they could very well be on the beach if, you know, if they were still going for promotion. I do believe they'd be coming with more hunger and whatnot. But to win the title at Ewood, I was just hoping they'd get it wrapped up this weekend. But obviously it wasn't, wasn't to happen. Gareth Ainsworth, the Blackburn fan, goes and, Hands Burnley their first home defeat in the championship since 2015, something like that. Um, but yeah, just we'll have to see how it goes. Hopefully we can, uh, hopefully we can, you know, rain on their parade and get a result against them, which would be a bonus because, you know, obviously most Rovers fans are looking at the that result and not thinking we'll get much from it. But I assume. You know, obviously, Reading and QPR would have been thinking the same, and they're much worse teams this season than we are. So there's absolutely no reason at home why we can't do the business against Burnley. They've shown that there's chinks in the armour now. You know, losing at home to QPR is a, is a really bad result. A QPR team that have been absolutely woeful for months now. Um, So you never know. But 
yeah, with Ryan Edges, it's it's as simple as this. He has to just put his laces through it. You know, he puts his laces through it, either forces a save from the keeper, which goes out for a corner, goes out for a goal kick, which means they can't counter straight away. Or you run it into the corner flag, which apparently Lewis Travis was screaming it at him to do, and he's obviously not listened um, to his captain and ultimately cost us the points. Um, I will say as well, I don't think we should be doing such negative tactics, really. Going to the five at the back, he, you know, Jean Doe's done it, what, three times now. Kov, Preston and Sheffield United in the cup. And every single time we've done it, we've somehow managed to throw the lead away. I wouldn't really put that Preston result down to it, but Scott Wharton slipping on his ass at the most pivotal points. He, he just looks so clumsy at the minute. He, he looked a lot better early in the season, but he's obviously he's had that injury and he's come back and not really found his rhythm. He obviously hasn't been afforded chances. But he's not that good of a defender to be completely changing the system for. And I think it just disrupts the team. We're not used to playing in a back five. And it's just it's just poor, really. Um, it's negative. And, you know, we, we clearly... We can't see out these leads, you know, early in the season, the amount of one goal lead we'd seen out um, was amazing, really. And, you know, it shows because of our goal difference and the fact we're eighth in the league, one point off fifth. Um, and we've got a minus, minus two goal difference, which is mind boggling. Um, but that that's how good we were with our game management. But as of late... I think the pressure has just got to the boys a little bit in that vital moment, you know, if it isn't, you know, obviously it is an accident or whatnot, but obviously Scott's kind of lunged in a little bit and slipped. And even when he's got up, he, he, it's probably a position where you take down the man. You don't allow him that opportunity in the dying moment. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's unlucky on Dom Hyam as well. He's obviously, it's obviously hit him and he's tried to put it out behind for a, a goal kick uh, for a corner, rather, which, you know, whether it would have got tuckered out is another thing. Um, but, yeah, it's the life of a Rovers fan, I suppose. If if we are going to get, if we are going to make the playoffs, which look increasingly slimmer game by game, unfortunately, it's going to be done the hard way. Wouldn't expect it any other way from us, to be honest. But, yeah, um Let's just bring on the dingoes, I suppose. Let's see what we can do. Hopefully, we can just put in a shift, give a good account of ourselves. We're twice the team now from last time we played, and we've got the home crowd there. They obviously have limited numbers who are going to the ground, so we just need to make our voices heard, dominate on off the pitch, and hopefully we can give the boys the confidence on the pitch to just go and get a result. We cannot leave that game now really with no points we have to at least take a point these past two results dropping four points have resulted in that really if we want to get playoffs now obviously we've slipped out we need that one point to get ourselves back in um to then push it back above Sunderland and yeah it's uh you know Sunderland under Tony Mowbray have gone into sixth place, which would be an absolute sickener in itself if he was to if he was able to get that first time round with them what first season up back up in the championship and he manages to get it with them lot after not being able to get it with us for five seasons or whatever it was. Um but yeah, I'm uh I'm just got it. I mean I, I and like I said, after the Cov game, I think a, a draw probably was a fair result, but it was worse yesterday just simply because it wasn't deserved and it was from our own doing. You know, the Cov game, if, if it was a handball or not, whatever, you know, they deserved it. And obviously it came from their own doing. You know, it came from our doing somewhat, obviously, Diaz or whoever it was being offside from the free kick, which then the next transition play resulted in the corner, which then led to the goal. But just to do that from Hedges is just so silly. And then, you know, you wouldn't expect it from an 18-year-old, never mind someone of his age. Um, 
And I was saying after it happened, you know, he shouldn't kick a ball for us again this season because it is, it, it can be that calamitous. Um, but it just all depends on Burnley now, really. You know, we get a result there, that's our game in hand. It could really lift things up around the place if we were to give some confidence to the boys and to the fans just to prove that we've still got something left in us. We can get results against the best team in the league. Um, as much as it pains to say it. And yeah, then two massive cup finals really against Luton and Millwall just to get in those playoff spots. You know, obviously the the, the golfing class between whoever's going to finish fifth and sixth and fourth and fifth, uh, fourth and third in Middlesbrough and Luton is huge. You know, all those teams vying for fifth and sixth are so inconsistent, but it is going to go down to the very final day, it looks like. It's going to be one hell of a hell of a race to see out of the six of us or however many teams it is who gets it. Even Swansea coming into the fray now, and who would have thought that even a few months ago they've been so poor most of this season. But you know it's just unfortunate for us we started so well and we've just dropped off now at the wrong time. Just need to pull ourselves up and just hope we can win at least one of these last three games and potentially get four or five points. Six would be huge from the last three. Um, but time will tell. Let's just hope Burnley and Luton are on the beach. And if Millwall are still vying for the playoff spots, which it looks like they will be after um, losing to Birmingham at home, was it? Um, you know, a couple of bad results there for Millwall, their last two. It's looking like that they're going to they're not going to be able to uh, let the foot off the gas for that final game. So it could be a real big game, that final game of the season. It could be a, a straight shootout of whoever wins makes the playoffs. So I'll probably will have to make that long journey down to London for that one. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Tuesday and kind of not at the same time. But just got to have some confidence, you know, we've played some brilliant stuff this season, we've got up for the big games, you know, when we played against Leicester, you know, we've turned them over who are a better side than Burnley, um, and Sheffield United away, we were brilliant that game as well, and it was a flip of the coin who won that game, and we were just unlucky in the end really, wrong changes and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he does need to start with the five at the back, I do think. And it, it just allows the pressure onto us, I feel, and it just disrupts the system. We we look comfy that entire game with the four at the back. There was just no need for it. Just as we look comfy against Cov with the four at the back. And just as we look comfy at Sheffield United with the four at the back, really. But yeah, let's just learn from our mistakes and hopefully let's just at least get a point on Tuesday.